Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry, a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, back with a new Blue Jay video. Blue Jay posted a few days ago and you all made sure to let me know. And I'm really becoming a fan of Blue Jay's channel. A lot of good humor and a lot of good history and some really interesting stories. And maybe none more interesting than this titled video, The Dumbest War Nobody Talks About. There've been a lot of dumb wars in history. So the dumbest, I gotta see that one. All right, Blue Jay is an awesome channel. This video will be linked down below. Make sure you have seen that and then come check out what we got over here and we'll learn together. All right, let's get started. All right, the old wise Blue Jay. Let's hear what he's got. Oh, daddy's got a story to tell. Uh, is it long? Sit down. For today's tale, we'll need to dial the clock back to the time when optimism died. The 20th century. It's a story of small disagreements <laughs> festering beyond reason. A chronicle of quarrels lasting through all seasons. A fable of ideologic conflict. Wait, 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 reason. A chronicle of quarrels last. He's crazy. Baldur's Gate 3 is trash. I, I've never played those games. I know people love the, the new one. But I like it. Y'all that watch me at my gaming channel and watch me stream, is this something I'd like? Sing through all seasons, a fable of ideologic conflict growing tenser than treason, all of which culminated into what was called a war, despite no shots being fired. Dad, I already okay. know about the Cold War. Yada yada, <laughs> better dead than red. True, true, I know true, the true, drill. True, yeah, true. <laughs> what? That pathetic decades long temper tantrum over whose money system was good and whose was the unholy abomination spawned from the bowels of the ninth <laughs> circle of hell? No, no, no. If I want to watch children amazing how how like when you look at the sides of the cold war how freaked out each other were over an economic system what was supposed to be at least at its basis right but it became so much more than just all right which is the best economic system because nobody's going to do and react the way they did in the cold war if it was just about that isn't that crazy when you really like sit down and think about it like why was it so hostile right Cry about a number again because it was made out to be way more than that, right? Way more than economics. Paper was handled while throwing around tubes. I go play Monopoly. I like my near military <laughs> conflicts like I like my woman. Full of crabs. Who's I'm sorry. We're gonna talk about the lobster war. <laughs> okay. Wait, did Khrushchev have crabs? Is that what they're saying? And uh, is that Kate Blanchett? Is that what that is? If anyone on that list or on those three people had it, it was, it was JFK. That dude it's the mid was popular amongst the ladies. <laughs> hundreds. And Europeans haven't quite grown out of their main character phase. They need to make sure no one forgets. Oh, it's funny because the two movies are so different. Right. <laughs> I'm here too. <laughs> okay. Why are people, people were trying to, uh, with Barbie and Oppenheimer coming out at the same time, it was amazing how people like found these weird ways to like blend them or like talk about them in the same context. Like, like you had to watch one or the other, or if you did watch them, you had to like have an opinion about them. Like, you know, am I tripping? Like, was that, is that not weird? Like what was just going on when those movies came out? I don't know. Hey, drop it, drop the oil. But as the 1960s rolled around, <laughs> tragedy struck. America had a jello mold phase. But Gosh. other than that, oh, nearly God. all of France. Okay. So I grew up in the struck. era. America. Okay. Where jello was in like every dish. And it was like, I don't know if I was just like appease the kids, but then you had these disgusting attempts at trying to put like real food in jello. Now I see shrimp over here in this jello, which is unbelievable. I thought like they would try to sneak in like, like, like vegetables into the jello. I remember growing up and I've never seen with shrimp though, but I don't know if you're older like me, maybe. Uh, Maybe you guys had something like that. Anybody have the things inside Jello I had a phase? Jello mold phase. Childhood? But other than that, nearly all of France's <laughs> African colonies claim they wanted independence. And as France loved they being did. seen as the in vogue colonial power, they granted it to them to look hip and definitely not because they couldn't afford another colonial war. Well, okay, I was going to say Algeria. Algeria was one that the French were not letting go. That ended up being a bloody, bloody bloody war to get independence i mean so much in the 1960s a lot of these like he was saying like uh former you know powerful imperial nations pre-world wars they uh were able to maintain those colonies and after the devastation of the war you know places like france and that were you know uh were economically ruined in that and couldn't hold on to those empires even if they wanted to but some places they held on to it harder and algeria is one of those and the french were interesting in their imperialism is they really like to rule directly and which probably made it harder for them to let go as 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 maybe like compared to the British who let a lot of their colonies go without um, as much uh, violence or necessary to give that. 
uh, independence of. This was all fine and dandy, to, like, Ghana, unless you were example. a French fisherman who just lost their free reign to catch lobster off the Mauritanian coast. <laughs> ah, slow your roll, Ratatouille. You need a permit for that now. Ah, yes, there is plenty of lobster. It's Don't lobster be so shell fish. Leave the area and cut the puns or I'll detain you faster than a panzer tank. Ah, don't get all grabby. I'll be out of your hair in a pinch. Oh gosh. <laughs> Stop. Yes. Yeah. I'm claustrophobic. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, a few of these fishermen heard some juicy good. gossip about this hot new spot just Luchy burning with lobster on the other side of the Atlantic. Experience. And for the cherry on top, they were practically free for the taking, being surrounded by nothing but the open water, salty air, Brazil. The fishermen hey, figured that last beaches. part could be a problem. You know, sovereign waters or mountain. something. So they sent out a delegation <laughs> to negotiate a license. But waltzing up to a country and saying, holy cannoli, that's a lot of lobster ravioli mm -hmm. how about instead of you guys fishing them to fuel your 20 million dollar canning industry i do the fishing and money getting part would most likely be met with haha eat shit therefore exactly. an elaborate ruse was needed to mask their fishing intentions so they put together a pitch that was so intricate so convincing that the brazilians would have no choice but to allow them coastal access to their lobster all while being completely oblivious of their objective to harvest them right. thank you for meeting with us we come to you as a pressing issue you see there the have been huh? seismic reports sounds if you will of a uh -oh. disturbance in the deep Kraken? originating from Jocos to brazil Kraken? john if you could just describe this disturbance for us of course so you can say <laughs> 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 and you see, it was those clicks, thank you, Sean. It was those clicks that led us to lobster. Now for our next step. Okay, sorry. Uh, I oh, think I know lobster. what this is. You boys are just here to conduct some routine research on lobster nurseries and just need one of those permits for a few boats, right? Uh, you know, that is exactly what we wanted to do. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, all. Yeah, we got the research license. <laughs> the French fishermen acquired a license allowing oh, three dude. boats to conduct research on lobster nurseries, which should normally be a relatively non-invasive process. But they looked at this permit and thought, Haha, that's a funny way to spell four. And everyone oh, knows research is only as good as your <laughs> sample size. And the French like to be as accurate as possible. Sure, this is all technically in violation of their license, but I've been driving with a suspended one for three years now and haven't had any problems. Work, Nevertheless, <laughs> Western European nations have this refined analytical Political process to find out just how much they can bend the rules when it comes to a foreign country. So they ran the numbers on Brazil. Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. No. Oh, God. We're good. While the fishermen oh, thought gosh. they pulled off a successful bamboozle, <laughs> Brazilian authorities already thought something smelled fishy about these fishermen. And luckily for them, they also had a similar analytical process. France, France. The same thing. Multi, uh, multi, multi century history of colonization and exploitation, including but not limited. Not limited to a lot. <laughs> Maybe we should check it out. Representatives were sent from the Brazilian Navy to act as inspectors and make sure the French fishermen were honoring the foundation of these nations' crustacean relations. They should be around Ooh, here. That's oh, that's uh, them. Alliteration. He gave it a hand. Oh, welcome to the Red Lobster. We had an interest. A uh, table for two, yes? I've got the perfect romantic spot for you two Romeos. What? No, we aren't. Doesn't matter. We're here representing the Brazilian Navy. Oh, shit, Brazil? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Welcome to the Red Lobster. Uh, a research center. Yes, yes, yes. Let me just give our head aside. Pierre! Pierre has been making some incredible progress. Oh, yeah? Delicious what have you found research. out in your uh, research? Say, uh, oh, what? You get pinched, Lil? No. You'll never amount to anything. <laughs> Upon investigation. <laughs> By the way, so, you know, you know how we all kind of grew up and were taught that, like, lobsters and cold-blooded creatures, it, you could humanely kill them by, like, you know, starting it, like, start a pot of, or a, a pot of water and then it'd be cold, right, because they're cold-blooded, and then turn it up and then they would basically heat up with it and then die. Um, I thought I'd heard that at someone, I need a scientist. I need a, I need a, um, a marine biologist or something here that actually the, the lobsters actually do feel pain in that. Cause it was always like, Oh, they're painless. And that's a humane way to, to prepare them. Right. But, but actually they, there's apparently evidence that they do feel pain. Does anybody know about that? All right. We don't need like a PETA like civil war or something down below, but 
someone get me some sources. They found that, along with violating the boat limit, the ships were not conducting research, but in fact, yeah. carrying out large-scale predatory lobster fishing with a trawl. Yeah. Trawling is this neat right. practice where you put a net in the water and catch the everything. Environmental impact? <laughs> what environment? So Brazil was like, uh, takes stop, all the, and revoked the fisherman's license, life. sending them lobster tail between the anchors back on over to the land well, of France, macaroons Brazil, in April incoming. of 1961. And with that, things returned to normal. Uh, excuse me, there have been seismic reports, sounds, if you will. The fishermen returned in November to request another research license, but this time further out at sea on the continental shelf, okay. outside of Brazil's territorial waters, which stretched 760,320 gumballs water? from the shore. Or for Simpleton's Dang. 12 miles. This request oh, was granted, and okay. for the rest of the year, I only know distances and gumballs. I'm year, I'm Brazil kept know. a close eye on them while the fishermen played the nautical version of I'm not touching you. But just exactly. like an early 2000s not cartoon you, fish, the you. French just couldn't keep their grubby little paws off those luscious lobsters. And By the way, there's, you know, um, fishing and like whaling and all that stuff in the Western Americas had always been you know, a, a really lucrative thing, especially for Europe from Europe, you know, uh, having done fishing for millennia, centuries, right? Like all that stuff, um, the abundance and the quality of a lot of that marine life or again, fishing, all that stuff was not nearly as good. It was one of the big things that, that also drove a lot of certain types of people, especially again, fishermen and stuff like that to coming to the Americas early on in early colonization and well, um, in the first generation or so. So you go up to, you know, like uh, the kind of like the Canada shore, Eastern Canada shore, and then going down below towards like the Boston area where you can really do some good, again, whaling and, and catch very large fish because so much centuries of overfishing, uh, same with timber, of course, too. And on January 2nd, 1962, the French boat Cassiope was found catching Ooh. lobster about 10 miles off the shore. Ten, 10 miles! <laughs> Got you! Ha <laughs> ha! You're with our waters now, cheese boy! Uh, you sure? Uh. Okay, this always Hold hurts this. me. Anyone Watch else just... always get hurt by that stupid thing? I don't care how gently I do it when it starts doing the automatic wind back with the measuring tape. That thing always hurts me so much. The Brazilian around. Corvette seized the French vessel for catching lobster without authorization, probably hitting a sick drift as it pulled up. But then again, <laughs> everything I know about Brazil comes from Fast Five. Anyway, by now, shit's getting pretty serious and mom and dad need to get involved. So whilst the fishermen and Navy battled the lobster sea, the French and Brazilian governments battled the diplomacy. <laughs> the war of the pen commenced and at the heart of this battle in the fierce political <laughs> trenches was one vital question like what is a lobster sounds oh, like a silly question right what is too. a lobster why it's the underwater excavator the crustacean of the basin the pogo stick with a prick but even my it, definition what? of a lobster as nature's gripper snippers wouldn't have been sufficient <laughs> for the contending nations they wanted to know whether or not a lobster was a fish France made the claim that a lobster Not was in really. fact a fish, so therefore they had the right to catch them according to the basis for fishing on the high seas set by the Geneva Convention of 1958. Brazil, for their part, pushed the thesis that here. lobsters were not a fish, but in fact an economic resource, a part of their continental shelf that they had the sovereign right to exploit, according to a different provision of the same Geneva Convention. So we need a scientist. They said, citing a treaty they didn't sign. And this oh, wasn't gosh. like your average 12 hour <laughs> Twitter beef. This diplomatic battle lasted all through 1962 and part of 63 which is <laughs> this is like height of the cold war you know like americans are building bomb shelters and the soviet union is m massing uh, amassing their nuclear arsenal so the united states soviet union are having nightmares and kids are doing duck and cover drills right and right at that height here at 62 63 this is what brazil and france's international issues are <laughs> Is hilarious considering the other things going on in the world stage during that time. Kennedy is <laughs> having us increase our troop presence in Vietnam. Oh, 400 wow. Green Berets were a start, the same but thing. they aren't going to be enough. Agreed. We must be careful, though. We don't want to replace the French as a colonial force in the area and bleed as the French did. That's France a good point. Got any Vietnam, advice, France? Yeah. So now with the pangolin being a geode, yes, according <laughs> to our established law of modus operandi derived from the fly eater sarlacc pit model, yes, yes, <laughs> then when what taking the Laplace trans transform of this in a matrix with the crustacean equation we find that lobster are in fact fish no 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 this completely violates the capricorn theorem let's hear it
Let's back this up. While that reality sadly only exists in my head canon, France and Brazil did do their best to support their claims and own what each other with debate. facts and logic. Brazil's <laughs> evidence was that lobsters were like oysters and that they both cling to the ocean floor, making them yeah. a part of the continental shelf. But France argued that when a lobster around. hops around the ocean floor, it's essentially swimming, making it a fish, which prompted Brazil's Navy expert so in ocean... Fish is, is when you jump. <laughs> if you can jump in around in the water, then you're a fish. Humans equal fish. Geography, him, to spit some iconic bars. If a lobster is a fish because it moves by jumping, then a kangaroo is a bird. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a pretty solid point. Yeah, and if a kangaroo is a bird, then, then a flying fish is a spaceship because it jumps through the air. A uh, little weaker, but okay. And, and if a flying fish is a spaceship. By the way, I, I gotta commend the, uh, the illustrators. They are very good. Uh, you gotta look at this because it could sometimes slide at the facial expressions really matching the dictation of the uh, the voice actor. Little things like that, I, I'm starting to notice more. It, it Basically what's happening is the little characters are really good actors. I love that it. That a seagull is an oil rig because it dives underwater. Uh, okay, let, let's settle down. No, if a seagull is an oil rig, then my wife is a fucking whore because <laughs> she's just her man to man. Okay, so I made up the end there, but don't worry. The first part is a real quote that you can safely <laughs> add to your really Instagram really bio. Deep. While mom and dad fight in their room, let's check out how things are going on in the water and wow, France just oh, doesn't boats. care. Like the IRS at my front door, the fishermen just kept coming back, completely unfazed by the money, international right? turmoil and monolithic tubes of death pointed at their face. So the Brazilian Navy just continued seizing their ships, going, stop it, while making them sign a paper swearing they wouldn't return. But the French were like, I can't read this. It would often just come back anyway. They want to know Portuguese. By the way, what do you think if Napoleon was running things at this time? Let's get some French history going. We think they would have done it. They would have just invaded Brazil, probably, just for a reason, and just say it was about lobsters. One instance, a French ship was caught by a patrol off the northeastern coast to order them to sail to deeper waters. At first, the fisherman captain and ignored them. But while he may not have spoken Portuguese, there are only a few ways you can interpret a blaring alarm stating Postos de Combati. Postos de Combati. Postpone, postpone the confetti? Oh, but you promised! <laughs> Sources differ in the exact timing, but it was around now when the French fishermen were getting pretty fed up with being told what to do, so they started to complain. And by complain, I mean they personally petitioned warships for protection from French President Charles de Gaulle himself. Charles de Gaulle said de Gaulle. Blubber, and granted the request, sending gunboats along with five more fishing oh God, vessels to the Brazilian coast. Escalated. The French sailed over with a lot more confidence this time. I mean, they've got defenses now. When has that ever failed for France. But unfortunately for them, Brazil. Uh, different. They were defending, actually defending the Maginot Line. Yeah, it was. It's complicated. I've talked a lot about the Maginot Line in my channel. It gets too much hate, in my opinion. Was about as likely to let them swipe their salty sea spiders as Hollywood is to pay their writers. <laughs> so the Brazilian Navy boarded these fishing boats without a second thought. Whoa, shit. I didn't think they'd seize them with us right here. Well, should we do something? No, you crazy? Haven't you seen Fast Five? Much like a pilot to a millionaire's island, the French Navy sat there and did nothing. But the same couldn't be said on the diplomatic front, as it was then that the French ambassador to Brazil visited President Joao Goulart this about the awkward. issue. Goulart yeah, stated guy. he didn't want any trouble with France and made the surprise presidential order to release three captured fishing boats and allow them to fish. Honey, they reopened that red lobster. Harry, we are a loyal Long John Silvers family. As expected, the Brazilian people <laughs> oh were God, none too pleased about this, and the resulting backlash pushed fasting. the government to rescind this permission shortly thereafter. Things then escalated even further when in late February 1963, Brazil delivered an ultimatum. All Frenchies have 48 hours to skedaddle skadoodle to the land of poodles, else they'd get the noodle. <laughs> I may or may not have written that line while intoxicated, but I wouldn't dare no. delete a line full of such right. eccentric flavor. However, the over in France, this lobster war was really starting to get on de Gaulle's nerves. Ugh, first they can't fish, then they can. Just kidding, they can't. Oops, now they've got two days to leave town. God, I don't understand this emotion I'm feeling. What you're experiencing is known as mixed signals, sir. No, I'm sure I tuned <laughs> this radio to AM. No, I mean, like, you know when a girl is kind of hinting she likes you, but you can't quite tell if she's into you because her actions give conflicting signs? Those are mixed signals. Oh. Paul, I'm rich in the president of France. I don't get mixed signals. I get bitches. So don't <laughs> speak to me about your poor people problems. I'm sorry. There's some De Gaulle fans. I think he's an odd looking dude. <laughs> he's, I don't think he's a, he's not a real handsome dude. I said that. I remember my Discord and I think a couple of the, couple people, especially French, were, were very, very upset at that.
<laughs> now, on one hand, Brazil is an important strategic. Okay, while we're at it, you can get thinking here. Start putting it down. Ugliest world leaders in history. List them. Go. Partner of the French. The latter has invested over a thousand million francs into the former, and they rely on the iron smelting, textiles, and chemical products of Brazil. Oh, God. Also, Brazil is capitalist and can help fight nearby growth of communism. There you go. So, some would say it would be US in the best Brazil interest of France. The U.S. and Brazil do have an interesting history with that, with U.S. being involved so many in, in South America, but then there's Brazilian issues. It, it's it's very common. To be like, wow, Take you know, maybe we shouldn't go to war over the ocean bugs that piss out their face. They're literally but just on the other hand, this wasn't the people's France. Fish. This was de Gaulle's France. And seeing as how this was the man who tried escaping uh, World War One prison camps uh, five times, once plus, while posing a... Plus he was like freakishly tall, so... Uh, as a nurse, it should be no surprise to hear that de Gaulle was a very stubborn man. And this stubborn man considered Brazil's actions to be a slight on the majesty of France, so he did not back down, but instead dispatched the French destroyer Tartu to the Brazilian coast. Tempers are flaring, Tartu. ministers are swearing. With this newest escalation, Brazil is preparing. Okay. The newspapers have been rousing the public, and the atmosphere in Brazil is one of imminent war. The Tartu by itself wasn't a huge concern. What made things scarier was yeah, where it came from. From. A whole task force of French ships merely three days okay. away, containing not only a state-of-the-art aircraft carrier, but also a but tanker named Le Bays, which means the fuck in French. For real. Which is also a river in France. It's both both in this context and, and by translation. Which also flows through the town of Condom. <laughs> Mobilize the Navy. Understood, sir. Wait. <laughs> and the Air Force. But there's one small problem with this mobilization. <laughs> it's the eve of Brazil's favorite holiday, the Carnival. Carnival? Yeah. A time for wild celebration, Party. dancing to music, stealing comically large vaults with Dodge Chargers. Oh wait, that's Fast <laughs> Five again. And this year, people were really memeing this whole situation. Far, Even some masked movies. revelers went around with lobster costumes. So much of Brazil's personnel were on short leave. But with some effort, they mobilized enough men, granted them war pay, and launched ships to search for the Tartu under Operation Lobster. Along with these that's ships, Brazil continued to mobilize Usually to meet the dumb, French at sea. Names. Because sure, their arsenal was full of vintage World War II vessels, and sure, they only had enough ammunition for 30 minutes of combat, and sure, they lacked adequate fuel supplies, and oh, sure, gosh. some ships were decommissioned yeah, with mechanical... It, we, we talk about this. This is... Uh, France is not a power... Uh, they're not the military power they were. They're literally just finding whatever they can at this time. It's why they're losing colonies all over the planet at this time. But hey, that's still pretty intimidating to have these warships uh, Problems going and sure, out. the French had a state the art navy and air force to counter them but at least they had their spirit and family. Brazil's planes that have been searching for the Tartu finally spot it, causing hey. it to start shooting exercises, probably to deter the aircraft. The plane responded by flying even lower to show they aren't messing around. Oh wow that's cute. <laughs> Neat little guns you got there. Uh oh what's this? These looks like rockets. This is hilarious. Wow, these sure are big huh? Brazil ships made their way towards <laughs> that was, the target. That was a fantastic scene. I love that was so good. <laughs> Dude, Blue Jays is funny, man. They're, they're 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 like take the are they taking the torch from oversimplifying? Is that what's happening now? Is have they done that yet? I mean it helps that they, they put out so much content. To his location late at night, dawn approached and the sea was veiled with a fog. In the distance, their radar detects something in the water. <laughs> Making their way closer, tensions running high, they finally made out the Tartu in the mist and- Oh, it's gone. Running low on fuel, the Tartu <laughs> retreated and was replaced with a much weaker ship. Oh, hey, what the about us? <laughs> You'll be fine. Another ship You'll is coming. <laughs> hey, guys, what's up? Oh, no. oh, with the playing field set and more Brazilians on the way, it was now just a matter of who would shoot first. Hey, maybe who we should it? go back and fish where we belong. Africa. The French ships decided <laughs> to head back across the Atlantic. I can After see those this, kind of names an agreement there. was signed where Brazil would allow limited French ships to fish for five years while sharing profits with Brazil, who would also get to expand the nautical miles of its territory. You know, just a few. 
hundred. Well, yeah. in the end, France decided war wasn't worth it. To be honest, I'm surprised it got even remotely this far. Running some numbers, if one anti-aircraft gun on one French vessel fired for just 11 minutes, say in case it wanted to teach some smart-ass aircraft a lesson, you'd already rack up an ammunition like bill ships. more expensive cool. than the three million dollars a year the French fishermen were raking in. But to be honest, with the cost of like street the cred thing. for a European nation losing a diplomatic war with Brazil over lobster, hey, Perhaps World War Three would have just been worth it. For real, get some points. Like, stack up the W, South America. Get them. Y'all been exploited for centuries. Get some Ws against the homeland. The Lobster War. Eight out of ten stars. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was so funny. All right, final thoughts. For you. Hey, I was for real when I was at, or when I was asking you guys, is Blue Jay like taking the, like the the torch? For comedic animated history videos from from oversimplified they keep growing they keep getting better and better and 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 when i see their their videos launch um the uh the initial views are just getting like insane right let me uh look real quick here so when i watched this video uh it was three days uh the, the three days after and it's six hundred seventy one thousand views i mean that's like what um oversimplified was getting and 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 uh blue jay is still like relatively new really in the big in the big scheme of things but um great job this was hilarious the writers are getting better i was telling you about like how they animate the actors is really really impressive there i had never heard of this story at all like at all so it was super cool to learn about here yeah again about like anything military related especially like overseas um between those south american countries between South American countries and, and other countries again, like former colonial powers too, and to see that they like and, and to see how they responded, and then were able to put their own show of force and get the French basically having to backtrack a bit. That was great. So props to the Brazilians there, Brazil, excellent. All right, y'all. Hey, um, thanks a lot for uh, being here with me. There's still a lot of Blue Jay videos I have not seen. Go through. You can check my my playlist or whatever. Just search for you know Mr. Terry Blue Jay and see what I have. But there's a lot I haven't seen, so. I'm always looking for more suggestions. Um, get those over, especially over to the Discord server. That's the best place to drop them. Um, link to that, to, to join that is down below too. And yeah, let me know because I'm always up to insert um, Blue Jay reactions with uh, all the other stuff I cover too. So, all right. Thanks a lot for being here and we'll see you next time.